On October 1st, 2017, I uploaded a new installment in my night vision series on a young and unique project titled Cat Ghost. A humorous and horrifying animated project with a quirky cartoon cast, Cat Ghost appeared with an approach we hadn't seen yet for an online mystery web series. Not just in appearance and style, but through its dedication to go above and beyond what we expected. Every new upload for Cat Ghost came with its own game you could download straight from the video description, weaving a deeper mystery while providing viewers with more content to puzzle over. At the time of my coverage, there were only four episodes. Birthday, Knock, Window, and Circle. Since then, we've seen the series grow to include seven more episodes, two teaser videos, a Christmas livestream, and a speed paint by the animator Tony Crynight that was hijacked by an evil spirit. Cat Coast has been very busy since we first covered it, and with all this new content on display, it's about time we pay it a visit for a deeper dive. If you haven't seen Cat Coast yet, believe me, it's worth your time. While it might perplex you with some of its horror and mystery bits, it has a surface storyline you can absolutely keep up with, and it's every bit as funny and endearing as it is creepy. Take a moment now to watch the series and browse some of the games if you like. I have a playlist for you with everything in order in the video description, or you can hit the icon in the upper right corner that should be appearing now. Once you're done, come back to me here and we'll start explaining what you just saw. Since we've already been through episodes 1 through 4, let's do a rapid review on what happened and what viewers discovered in the associated games. Cat Ghost 1, Birthday, released June 15th, 2017. We're introduced to Elon the Cat, Nara the Ghost, and Gideon the Hedgehog with an immediate impression of their group dynamic. Look at him, sleeping, like a baby. Yeah, like a fat, little baby. Like a little, fat, ugly baby. Like a fat, ugly, little, abandoned baby. Because the baby was so fat and ugly, no one would ever love him. Gideon! Oh, oh, jeez. Oh, awesome. It's you two. What do you want? Rise and shine, birthday boy. It's time for a surprise. I'm sorry. I think you've made a mistake. It's not my birthday. Now go away. Get dressed, cause we're going to party country! Please explain what party country is. It's a magical, wonderful land filled with bumper cars, arcade games, and laser tag. We just discovered it last week. Wow. Just let me finish my nap and I'll get right on that. Gideon isn't allowed to finish his nap as the two whisk him away to enjoy a nasty looking cake celebrating Gideon's 48th birthday. Then they head to Party Country, an arcade cabinet that transports Gideon into a pixelated forest and shows him three characters. A tall red skeleton who says, It burns, I can't feel my skin. A mysterious rock that will be later known as Key. And the bust of a man that says, Let us reunite. In this episode, there's a hidden frame showing a character that will appear much, much later. A sock puppet that resembles a snake or some other reptile. The game, Happy Birthday, is essentially party country, but allows players to go through the rooms as Gideon and encounter more objects and people, all of which have three randomized quotes, except for the bus Gideon meets, the big stone, and a chair hanging on rope. These new interactive objects include a small blue skeleton that can't breathe, a piece of mirror, a shovel, and a bone pile. The big stone, which we come to know as Key, has the most interactive capability. Asking who the characters are provides titles. Gideon is the judge, Elon is the temptress, and Nara is the proselyte. A proselyte is someone who has converted religions or beliefs. Nara and Elon both died in the year 1650, while Gideon died in 1672. Gideon is in a dark place, Elon is in a jar, and Nara is immersed. Nara died because she was evil, Gideon died because it was time, and Elon died because of the council. Asking who the council is produces the answer, the Keepers of Balance. There have also been live sessions with Key, in which it seems possessed, and players have received custom responses with the spirit on the other side. I even had one during my first research attempt. When Key asked if she sent me, I asked who she was, and was told, Liar. I asked who the cat was, and Key said, Thief. There were also plenty of answers regarding a woman listening or knowing I was there, which made Key scared. The final touch to the game was a special prompt. Type the word murder and you'll be shown to jump scare of the blue skeleton who couldn't breathe. Most of these games have that trick programmed as a running gag, actually. Kankos 2 Knock appeared on July 7th, featuring a door with a horn decoration called The Horrible Beast and the number 33. 
Elon and Nara are trying to tell Gideon knock-knock jokes, which he doesn't think are funny, and he's forced into a chamber locked by the demon door, where he spends two years trying to figure out the perfect knock-knock joke so he can escape. He succeeds and is traumatized by visions, but makes it outside in the company of Elon and Nara. This episode featured literal writing on the wall, saying, Megalith is key, wild parts of the world, and showing a lot of years in Roman numerals. Wild Parts of the World is a quote from the book Remembering Jamestown in a passage talking about remote and primitive territories where Satan reigned. Colonists did not dispute the assumption that early 17th century Virginia was one of the wild parts of the world. Taking that clue and trying to cross it with a list of years does bring about a result. Some of the years listed match dates in the history of Virginia's attempts to hold trials on witchcraft. Writing in the episode is also revealed to be in Theban alphabet, known as the Witch's Alphabet. This episode also has hidden frames that keep consistency with what's found in the birthday game. There's a podium, which signifies a judge, a jar of ashes, and a hanging chair. We have a shot of a graveyard, and as we discovered in our night vision episode on Cat Coast, a message from a bird-shaped character called the Skinwalker saying they'll see us all soon. The associated game, Joke, features the door Gideon has to escape through, and players need to type in phrases using tap code. There are five answers, and the first is more or less confirmation of how the game is played. Type Megalith and you'll receive an image of the keystone. Megalith is key, and tap code is how to get results in this game. One of the hidden frames in Knock says excruciate. Tap that in to see a burning stake, like you'd find in earlier periods of history. Proselyte gives us the image of a drowned skeleton, and a chair. Trinity shows us two females and a male in the center with a tricorner hat. And if you type libation, you'll get Gideon's cake. So now, as early as episode 2, we can begin tying things together with the information found. Remember the description of the characters we got from Key? Who was the proselyte? Nara. Where is Nara? Immersed. As we see in Nock, the proselyte, a religious convert, is drowned at the bottom of a body of water alongside a chair, fully immersed in this lake or ocean. The small blue skeleton in Birthday told us, It's cold here. I can't breathe. And of course, in the game, we have the hanging chair. Put it all together, and what do we get? Nara is the proselyte, a religious convert, dropped from a chair into a body of water and drowned. She is the small blue skeleton. She's cold, she can't breathe, and neither can the skeleton at the bottom of the water. By virtue of this connection, we can take the answers from Key concerning Elon and match them to the red skeleton, a frame from Nock, and a reward from its game. Elon is in a jar, right? Well, here's the jar, full of what looks like dirt, or ashes. And we have the excruciatingly painful stake for burning criminals. The red skeleton tells us two very interesting things. It burns, I can't feel my skin, and trapped like a fly in a jar. Elon and Nara both died in the year 1650. We have allusions to Virginia's wild parts where Satan holds power and a list of years, which reference witchcraft trials, some of them in Virginia. In Nock, we have two instances of Theban alphabet written by Elon and Nara. And going by the solving method we use for info on Elon and Nara with Gideon, the judge, what can we put together? First, it seems pretty obvious they are the figures from the Trinity picture. What we can also conclude is just who and what Elon and Nara are. They're women convicted of witchcraft, and somehow Gideon was involved in their demise from a position of judgment. Nara was executed during the act of dunking, a trial to find and punish witches. The accused was placed into a chair or a cage suspended by rope and then lowered into the water. If they were innocent, they would sink, but if they floated, they were guilty. Ironically, this had a guaranteed outcome no matter what. Death. As for Elon's fate, that's very clear. Burn the witch. Gideon's place as judge in this context really ties a picture together of what's likely happening here. The group is in a very strange form of purgatory or hell. Gideon's here because he supervised the death of two women accused of witchcraft, and they're here because… well, they were witches, allegedly. What we don't know is the nature of this purgatory or why we're even seeing it. Let's keep moving and maybe it'll get clearer. Cat Ghost 3, Window, appeared on August 13th and opened with a clip we understand a little too perfectly now. The title of the show on the ocean floor. Elon is brushing her fur when she hears a noise outside, someone leaving a pocket mirror with a message in Theban. For Elon. A terrifying woman appears inside, scaring Elon, who runs into Nara, asking if she found anything special outside. Elon gets upset and Nara blames Gideon, who's chopping wood. 
Elon threatens him for using her craft against her and then transforms into a demon, which pretty much answers the question of whether or not she really was a witch. Inside, Elon finds his picture of a red tall woman and a blue shorter girl, with a message. From Nara, to Bestest Best Friend. If we couldn't guess who the red and blue skeletons were before, we sure can now. Elon takes the cloth off the mirror, sees the apparition, levitates, is poked in the head, and then we get... Elon and Nara in-game. How can we tell? Tall redhead, small girl with blue-tinted hair. The game associated with this episode is quite simple. Wait for 3am, the witching hour, to see that scene between Elon and Nara unfold. So, what is it Nara is crying about? The clue can be found by waiting in the window game for three minutes, at which point a painted image is shown of a dog on a sacrificial altar. This appears to be in line with the picture Nara made. See the small shape next to the cabin in the background? Sure looks like a dog silhouette to me. No word yet on the promise Nara made to Elon, but we do have a good guess why she's upset now. Kaka's 4 Circle is the best confirmation in the series of the nature of Elon and Nara, which appeared September 27, 2017. Elon and Nara sit at a campsite with a pentagram set up, lighting candles. And what is it they're doing here? How did you even do that? Oh, can I do that? Can I, can I, please? No, no, no more. We've got work to do, you know. Wait, 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 no, do it again, come on, do it again! No, no, you promised. You were gonna help me stop the bowels of evil from leaking into the sanctuary today. Ugh, fine. Alright, come on, stop complaining. Just sit in the circle and hold out your... Uh, oh. Seriously? <laughs> Sorry. Maybe we could try something else. Uh, what if we put our foreheads together? Okay! Ow! Okay. You ready? Mm-hmm. Wanderers, Wanderers of, of ether. ether. Voices, Voices of, of the deep. deep. Dwellers of an ancient plane. Awaken from your sleep. So, yeah, they're witches. Or they were. Long story short, Gideon ruins everything, Nara gets possessed, and Elon has to fix it. During the act of removing the weird spirit from Nara, we experience a game cutscene. We have the figure of a judge, a blue-haired woman in a pink dress, and a woman with gray hair in red. White text appears accompanied by an odd sound. The associated game, Unholy Circle, is the most fun yet, and there's opportunity to appear and play as one of three characters. The woman in red, the woman in pink, and the red-headed woman, Elon. This game is simple, but multi-layered. Keep the ghosts from attacking the village by casting spells while collecting candles. There's a good ending in which you collect less than five candles before the ghosts destroy the cabin, and an unlocking condition for the bad ending, which reveals the full pentagram and its candles if they're collected before the cabin is destroyed. If the bad ending is unlocked, a player can run to the right of the screen and go down a secret path, which turns them into the blue-haired character. This character has been labeled the B sprite in-game according to the files, and runs all the way to the right, flying off a cliff to her death. But who exactly is this? In the game, if you get the red-haired character, the sprite is labeled E. Obviously, this is Elon. The gray-haired character with the red dress is labeled N. And while we might think the blue-haired character would be Nara, if we compare the sprite labeled N with the pixel scene in the game before it, we find a match. Nara's character here is in red, with much more gray hair than blue. 
So if this is Nara and this is Elon, who is the sprite labeled B? Our only clue comes from the same place we find a hint for getting the full bad ending, the Circle episode, which tells us to go east in bad times during a hidden frame. In the credits, special thanks are given to Beth. At this particular moment, we can temporarily associate Beth with Sprite B. Regardless of identity, however, this character doesn't have a very happy ending, and if we compare it to the message shared in the video, we catch something. I'm trying to be strong, but I can't. That's why I flew away. Do you ever wonder where birds go when they fade from sight? In a very morbid sense, we can see the blue-haired character flying at the end of Unholy Circle. There's also only one allusion we have so far to a bird in the series, and it's tied up with the skinwalker. A bit confusing at the moment to pull apart, but luckily we're just getting started on content for clearing things up. Final note. The judge character here would make sense as Gideon, since he's labeled the judge and seen in proximity to Nara. This pixel scene also plays out during Nara's possessed attack on Gideon. Kind of makes you wonder if the possessing spirit was the blue-haired woman, doesn't it? November 28th, 2017 saw the release of Cat Ghost 5, Banana. The premise is simple. There's a noise in the woods, the trio go out to investigate, and they find a crying banana, who just can't get over the fact that he's a banana. Oh hey, look, I found it. But what could it be? seems more like a plantain than a banana. The banana recognizes Elon, which is very unexpected, and she promises to take care of his problem, downplaying the recognition. Her solution is revealed the next morning. Banana pancakes for breakfast. We follow Elon to the attic, which is filled with cages, revealing a sinister secret. There have been other characters appearing here the whole time, and Elon's been hiding them in the attic. The game for this episode, also titled Banana, is a new playstyle. You are trapped in Elon's attic, looking for jars while trying to avoid Elon herself, who will crash the game with a jump scare. Each jar collected comes with a message and a colored light. Looking at a list of jar messages and the associated colors, it's difficult to determine just which ones belong to what character, as they seem to be quotes from several. Some of these quotes are pretty telling, giving us birth and death years for characters, while also highlighting this curiosity. First I lost my daughter, now my husband. All I want is my daughter back. We also have quotes that seem related to Elon's execution, the death of a dog, warnings about witchcraft, and the names of characters we haven't met. There's as much info here as there seem to be creatures Elon trapped in the attic. Kako 6 Hull arrived on January 14th, 2018. We begin with a wall of fire, then watch Elon shrinking away from a growing prison, which turns to a computer screen accessing a program, Dark Cavern, the game associated with this upload. What follows is... Quite odd, but still somewhat coherent, telling a short story. Next up, Elon appears, woken from sleep on a table by... a wormhole. Gideon informs us that he's been throwing garbage into it, and Nara scares everybody by flying inside to explore. The next moment might have been directed by David Lynch. the egg and the other Gideon appear through the portal, thanks to Elon, and the two Gideons are unaware of each other for a moment before touching hands, at which point the universe seems to explode and then credits roll. Usual Kako stuff, you know. 
The game for this episode, Dark Cavern, is pretty unique. Your character has long hair and is naked running around a dark system of caves. Many different objects and rooms can appear, randomly generated, prompting different bits of dialogue and multiple endings. Each ending presents an introduction to type a word, initiating an action, which will reward a player with a poem. There's a red baby, a tree, a shovel, a wagon, and what seems like a broken camping tent. The poem retrieval instructions are as follows. Type steel to take her. Warning, this action cannot be undone. You are a monster. Type darkness to slip into the night. See you soon. Type dig to bury yourself. No one will miss you. Type wheel to abandon your family. You can never go back. Type camp to start a meeting. Let us reunite. The steel poem concerns remorse over circles and ovals that undid someone's life and how they're in a chamber where they carry their bane, empty halls and walls with no guests around. There were four people or creatures before. One was too scared and soon ran away. One felt too tired and never came to play. One was too small, no hope it would say. One didn't bother and inside I'll stay. The darkness poem is much simpler, warning a loved one against venturing into the forest where they'll be lost forever. The poem that comes from choosing to dig, the canary song, describes the fate of someone trapped in the cavern. It may be called the canary song after the phrase, canary in a coal mine. The wheel poem is about a traveler for sure, with a home that sits on wheels. They're a loner, unfit for company, made for one goal, traveling always away from faces that I've deemed unkind. This fits the image of the wagon very nicely. Finally, the camp poem. This describes a place over and over, a secret place that's very special, but will never be found by others. It's on no map, but it's a trap, and you'll never leave. The best case of connection that could be made about this game lies in the Canary Song and the story at the beginning of the video, describing a girl who loved to dig and was sent somewhere deep where she died. Whether this is a memory of Elon's because she was that girl or she knew about her isn't clear, but we have more than just her wraparound appearances to go by. The story ends with two sudden shots of Elon, the second of which shows her going up in flame. Kako 7 Key arrived on March 5, 2018. This episode concerned a lot of viewers due to its ambiguous ending, and started, as usual, with a fair amount of mystery. The Kako's cabin is in a snowstorm, and there seem to be constant earthquakes. Elon, Nara, and both of the Gideons are inside having dinner, with their space egg in the background. We find out the earthquakes are happening because the Gideons keep nearly touching, which is threatening the world even more than it did last time. Fed up with them, Nara goes outside and celebrates the snow while Elon sits on the step, sensing that things aren't quite right. Nara goes to show her that everything's fine by tasting the snow, but ends up choking on the taste. Elon presses ahead with her worries and goes to consult the megalith, Key. Your world is what? what? But, 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 why? why? Privacy, compatibility, bad timing. What can, what can I, do? I do? There's nothing you can do. I love you. I gave you three years of my life. I'm sorry. But, but we tried our best. Sometimes, things are just out of your control, and things seem their darkest, and you won't give up. All you can do is keep trying until you die. I don't understand. Life is too short to blindly pursue a goal. You can't forget people out there beyond the world. Elon is transported to a cliff, where Nara joins her and she shares what Key said. Nara, concerned, asks if it's really the end. Elon assures her the universe never truly ends, it merely changes. Together, they sit and wait for the collapse of the universe, which is predictably caused by the Gideons. Elon and Nara get snapped into oblivion by Thanos as some sweet music plays, and we get full confirmation on the sprite characters. They really were Elon and Nara. This episode's game, Key, wasn't much of a game, but a promise. It held a countdown to March 20th, 2018. On that date, a message appeared. Beth has arrived in our world, but she is not allowed to pass. This is also when the video Void 1 was uploaded, confirming the identity of another character sprite.
Following this declaration that Beth, the woman who jumped from the cliff, was now in the Kako's world, viewers decided to give Key a visit in person through the birthday game. It was here discoveries were made regarding Beth, starting with the appearance of her skeleton and three dialogue prompts. The wind blows softly. I soar. I have returned. Asking Key who Beth was gave the answer, Widow. Going back to the Key game, a new countdown was discovered bringing up April 1st, 2018. This was no joke as a new message did appear, saying, Malone has arrived in our world. She is allowed to pass. The video Void 2 then appeared. So this video is very interesting. We have the red skeleton Elon and a newcomer who we can assume to be Malone talking down to Elon in a position of knowledge and power. When I found you, she says, you were starving, sick, and dying. I took you in and gave you the key, but you still turned your back on me. Elon says she doesn't need her and can do things on her own. Is that why you ran from the wagon, Malone replies. And now we can tie some things together. The poem Wheel was about Elon, and the wagon belonged to Malone, who she was traveling with. Judging by the setup of the Dark Cavern sequence and game, we might also guess Elon was the girl in the cave system who enjoyed digging. Even if she wasn't, Malone found her in a similar state, starving, sick, and dying. The final message from Key with a countdown came on June 21st, 2018, and said, Fibers of metal, conduit rods, primitive tools open a temporal portal. Speak now. This was an instruction to head to the Kako's website, which had directions for leaving recorded questions for Elon, Nara, and Gideon, which were then answered by the characters in the awesome Episode 8, Judgment. There's a lot of gold in this, purely for the ways the characters interact with fans, and there have never been more jokes in a Cat Ghost episode, as well as more answers. We learn that Elon doesn't trust Malone and she doesn't want you to trust her either. Nara and Elon became friends after Nara found her campsite in the woods, and then wouldn't leave her alone. The council is also revealed by Gideon to be a way to keep the town safe from the gypsies, which immediately angers Elon. We've also got confirmation that Nara did indeed drown, but she has some pretty good humor about it. Also, someone asks about libation, Gideon's cake. Elon and Nara are immediately disgusted, but then we get a pretty good punchline of Gideon eating the cake, which now says 49 instead of 48. An excellent Easter egg because this video came out just after Kako's first birthday, so technically, a year really had passed. And before we get to the really juicy bit, here's the nightmare fuel response to somebody asking about the skinwalker. As the questions go on, the characters begin making remarks about how they've been here answering viewers for years, and suddenly, Elon realizes something isn't quite right. During this time, we have a visualizer playing across a computer screen in a random pattern, and when the void returns, everything begins to break down. After another classic, everything starts melting, cat goes moment, we come to find 3D models of the characters on the table alongside the recorder. So what was that all about anyway? Why show this video clip seemingly related to nothing? 
Viewers puzzled over this for a bit until somebody realized you could almost make something out as the shape moved over certain segments. And after what I can only imagine was a monumental effort of screenshot layering, a major secret was found. This image, showing a bargain bin for value games, 90% off, with copies of Party Country inside, starring Elon, Nara, and Gideon. What on earth does this even mean? This feels like a secret worthy of the effort it must have taken to uncover it and how long it took in the series to appear. After all, this episode counts as the one-year birthday upload for Kakost, so this would be considered the gift. And if this means something in a story sense, and it absolutely must, then it's quite the gift indeed. This would explain why every episode comes with a game. This would explain why there are so many moments of glitching and code and allusions to old technology. Were these characters from a bargain bin video game? Have they always been characters from a bargain bin video game? How does that even make sense with their backgrounds as people who died in the 1600s during witchcraft trials? What kind of game was Party Country? Is it possible that everything we've seen was part of Party Country after all, and that's why it ended up in the bargain bin? Did someone make a game with a crazy underlying narrative like this and it was just too weird for consumers? Answers have to be on the horizon, and the only way to find them is by going forward. The Christmas lives we mentioned earlier apparently ran for just under 12 hours and had a few secrets inside in the form of numeric messages, which seemed to be questions of the characters posed by the Skinwalker, who would sometimes appear as a version of Nara. This activity is similar to the events from the Tony Cranite stream, during which the Skinwalker appeared to haunt Nara, saying things like, You can't hide from the truth, and she never loved you. It ended with Nara reliving the memory of her death by drowning. The next public video on Kakos was titled Warmth, which puts our characters in the middle of a blizzard. Gideon can only complain about how cold it is, while Elon looks for shelter. She manages to find another portal, which Nara flies into, bringing forth a meeting with Key. What follows is the best announcement of somebody saying, Hey, we have a Patreon now that I have ever seen, as Key says the story may end prematurely unless the characters find paper notes, followed by Gideon warming himself on a pile of burning money. <laughs> The crew of Catcoast then announces there are six more episodes left of the season, and due to some financial difficulties, a Patreon is the only way to balance a life-work schedule for finishing the show in a timely fashion. It's delightful to say that Catcoast has more than reached their goal on Patreon, ensuring prompt continuation of the series and even some cool rewards for higher tiers, including physical gift boxes. I'd also like to highlight the images and descriptions for the individual Patreon tiers are dark and hilarious, keeping perfectly in theme for Catcoast. The Patreon was announced on March 4th, 2019, and Kakos came back swinging on April 1st with the upload, Welcome Home, featuring a major surprise. Brand new forms for all three characters. Gideon is now his favorite item, wood. Nara is a jellyfish, and Elon has gone from a cat to a bat. We also have an appearance by a new arrival, who Elon warned us about, Malone. You're still trying to control everything again, aren't you? You! Surprise! So nice to see you again too, love. It's been far too long. Elon! Elon? Hello? Uh, Elon! Why do you think she'd leave like that? I wasn't trying to make her upset with my rude comment. I was just telling the truth. The truth hurts sometimes. Not always, but just sometimes. I can't stop talking. She probably couldn't deal with your ugly face. Oh, well, well, uh, that actually didn't feel good at all. Elon! We sure have been wandering a long time. Are you sure we're going the right direction? Oh my, what's that? I don't know. Looks kind of creepy. No, it doesn't. Gideon, of course it is. It's a skeleton. It's creepy. It isn't to me. I lack the ability to feel fear. I think it's a genetic disorder. familiar in some way. I don't know. I don't remember anything. What are you doing here? I told you I can handle this on my own. It's fate. You have finally arrived. What is that even supposed to mean? Do you still believe that life is just a series of random events? No. Life is what I make of it. My choice. I'm the one running the show now. You're trying to control something that is far bigger than you are. And you're just going to stand by and let this happen? You can create and change anything, but instead you hide your face. I hate you. I was trapped because of you. 
That's why you ran away, isn't it? When you stop swimming against the current, Elon, you will realize that same river is trying to take you to a beautiful place that you never even knew existed. You created this, and now you must be the one to deal with it. Your time is up. A bright light flows from the monitor, catching Gideon and Aura, and in its glow we witness a crack in the egg that came from space. This episode's game is titled Midnight, with a very revealing premise. You play as Beth, sneaking into a village in order to steal a baby. After picking it up, the screen spells out the command, run, and a new minigame takes over, forcing you to run from the inhabitants of the village, armed with arrows and spears. If you escape, you're given the reward screen. Beth, her new baby, and the man in the tricorner hat from the Trinity picture. That picture, Trinity, was in a grouping of clues that highlighted the true nature of Elon and Nara. With Gideon as the judge and this moment of someone very much looking like a judge next to Beth and Nara, it seems we're being driven to a certain conclusion. The real relationship between Nara and Gideon. This puts major context to something Beth says during this moment from the episode circle when she first appears. Neither of us wanted to, but he had to. It was his duty. The insinuation here is heavy. Gideon and Nara knew each other before ending up in the Kakos purgatory because Gideon's wife Beth stole her as a child. There are lines from the Midnight Game that appear upon entering a house that really highlight what's happening from Beth's perspective. How can he love you? You cannot provide. Why was I made this way? I wish for an angel. I failed him. I will fix this. I can hear crying in the distance. This land has answered my prayers. We will give her a better life. I will not die an old maid. The situation seems pretty clear from all these clues. Beth, Gideon's wife, was incapable of carrying a child. She felt like a failure, unable to provide him with offspring, questioning why she was made like this and knowing she needed a miracle. He wanted a child, and Beth questioned how Gideon could love her without one. Seeing no alternative, she took full advantage of the nearby village of Native Americans, sneaking in at midnight and stealing one of their babies, telling herself she and her husband could offer a better life. Their home was the better option. Beth wouldn't die an old maid. If we go back to the messages from the attic game, of which there are a lot admittedly, we find a strong grouping under the purple light that fit together as expressions from one character. First, I lost my daughter. Now my husband. All I want is my daughter back. Let us reunite. I know you don't mean what you said, Nara. My love is more powerful than death. See you all soon. Look at the timeline of death and you'll see it's correct. Nara died well before Gideon, executed for witchcraft in the same trial as Elon. If this is Beth speaking, then yes, she lost her daughter, then her husband, and having no one after Gideon's passing, she chose to fly off the cliff at the end of Unholy Circle. It also makes a ton of sense that Beth would be the possessing spirit of Nara in the sequence that introduced her and the start of her tragic backstory. She changes Nara's color to dark blue, the same as the sprite's hair, and becomes extremely affectionate towards Gideon. Even if she's not entirely coherent, her feelings come through. The picture this paints is very grim. If we put everything we know together now, the story of Cat Ghost seems to go like this. Elon, age 19, was traveling the world in a wagon with Malone and studying witchcraft. At some point, there was a disagreement with Malone's plans or teachings and Elon ran from the wagon, heading off on her own. She established a camp where she was discovered by Nara, who wouldn't leave and insisted on befriending the older girl. Elon, the temptress as Key described her, converted Nara to witchcraft, making her the proselyte. When witchcraft was discovered in the town, or as Gideon put it, gypsies were found nearby, the town government went to work, and the council, which Gideon was part of, had to conduct trials, even if it meant putting his own adoptive daughter on the chair. Beth pled with the council, which we learned in her first appearance, and Gideon couldn't help their case. Neither of us wanted to, but he had to. It was his duty. No matter how many times I begged, they never listened. Three times I called. They decided. Now it's only one. Beth did her best to sway the council and failed, and Gideon was in a terrible position. It's most likely he opted for the chair test because there was some measure of Nara possibly surviving, whereas the stake was certain death. But Nara drowned, and while it proved her innocence, it didn't save her life. Enraged, Gideon and Beth sought the deepest punishment for Elon, who put their daughter in this position, and they had her burned at the stake. Several lines from the purple jars are cold in their description of Elon and her demise. The screaming continued, until sunrise. Ash smeared the ground of which a soul had once existed. 
bury her ashes and prevent the spread of her evil ways. Having lost her daughter, Beth clung to the only person left in her life, her husband Gideon, and when he passed, there was no happiness remaining and no way to keep the guilt at bay. She committed suicide by flying, throwing herself off a cliff into the sea below. The story feels sound, but there are definitely pieces missing and we know it, because Malone's importance seems much bigger than just being Elon's influence, and we know the skinwalker is around. Also, where is Beth inside the realm of Cat Coast? We've been told by Key she's on this side now, but we haven't seen her. Let's continue on to Cat Ghost 10, Reunion, which appeared on May 5th of this year. We open with a very odd premise following Gideon and Nara's journey into the computer monitor. Nara is hanging out with a bird we first saw under a message from the Skinwalker, and it's... barking. Meanwhile, Gideon gets a visitor of his own, who needs closed captioning to understand. It's the snake puppet we got a glimpse of all the way back during the first episode in a single frame. It tells Gideon, It's so good to see you. I love you so much. And we need the closed captions to understand that because the creature's way of talking sounds like this. Hello there. I like your portal. It's pretty. Hey, cut it out. It tickles. Oh my goodness. You're so affectionate. Hey, I like you too. Do you recognize that sound? It should seem a bit familiar to you. Here's the first time we ever heard it. The sound of the snake is the same tone used for Beth's introduction, relaying her story, and the snake is overjoyed to see Gideon. It's so good to see you. I love you so much. This is it. We found her. Beth is finally here, in snake puppet form. This really is a reunion, even if Gideon doesn't understand. Next, we find Elon, turned back into a cat, and hiding out on a wagon during a snowstorm, inside of which are two frozen bodies. Back with Gideon and Beth, we see her say she can provide happiness, and produces a box with a totem inside. Then we switch over to Nara and the bird dog, who suddenly gains a skinwalker eye. What's wrong? You have helped me so much since we met. I want to give you something in return. Uh, what is it? I can make them like you. How? See that blade? Pick it up. I... I... I don't think I can do this. If you do this last thing for me, it will be finished, and I will never ask anything of you again. I can't do this. You made a promise. Do it, Nara. Do it. 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 This scene and the remarks made by the Skinwalker dog are reminiscent of the pixel cutscene between Elon and a crying Nara from the window game. Nara says, I can't do this. Elon says, You are going to help me. You made a promise. Nara then relents, I will do anything for you. As for the bird being a dog and dying under command of the Skinwalker, we do have a callback to this from earlier in a much more subtle fashion, again from the window game. The painting of the dead dog on the sacrificial altar. It seems now we're getting solid hits of backstory for these characters, tying up loose ends of history from threads that began in the first few episodes. Beth's backstory is largely solved, and we've moved on to Elon, Nara, and the dog, as Nara is made to relive a moment from her past, sacrificing a dog as part of her new upbringing. Whether this included other members of the coven or not isn't clear, but we do have a hint of additional facts on this event. Beth might have seen the whole thing. As usual, a game accompanied the upload, and this one's titled, Leak. It's quite simple, but pretty stressful. You play as Elon and Nara, who suddenly get up from their campfire and start running from a lot of angry spirits. The objective is clear. Avoid obstacles and outrun the ghosts as the chase gets faster. There are also arrow prompts in the game, with successful matches affecting the outcome. You can get one of five end screens. One with Elon as a mess laying in front of Malone in the woods. Elon and Nara sitting in front of Gideon's cake, surrounded by people, which is very odd. 
Malone, Key, and a person short enough to be Nara in a hood surrounded by what I presume is a coven. A shelf with a pile of Gideons on it, and a bloody sacrificial altar near a campfire. The pile of Gideons is the most mysterious item here to be honest. On first impression you almost have to guess what they might be. Toys? It reminds me of the scene at the end of Judgment with the characters in 3D model casts on a desk. They really were designed as part of Party Country, a video game. It's feasible there could have been merchandise, though that certainly wouldn't have ended well. And now for the most recent episode to roll out, Kakos 11, Confrontation. We open with a stairwell, some computer static, and dialogue. White intercut with quick flashes of red. So, this is where you've been sneaking off to at night? You are more beast than woman. No, sweetie, please don't cry, I'm not angry at you. I will make you suffer, harlot. Wipe your tears, young lady. I will take care of your mess. Don't let him see you cry. It feels like a conflict of emotions in one person, possibly Beth talking to Nara after finding out where she goes at night. Speaking of, if we wanted great confirmation of the dynamic between Gideon, Beth, and Nara, we get it right away in the next scene. All three are seated at the table, and even with Beth and Gideon's hideous skinwalker faces on display, we can see what's being portrayed here, really laying down the impression of the family image as Nara relives a memory. Next, we return to Elon and Malone, with Elon doing something that reminds us of the Dark Cavern game and her possible origin. You know how this works. You can't take without giving something in return. I'll worry about that later. <laughs> I remember when I was your age. I thought I knew everything about how the universe worked. I thought I was going to be the one to change everything. Well, you didn't. I spent years studying for this. I was the top of the class, and now I'm weighed down with the burden of doing the same thing over and over again. I'm not a machine. I'm real. Don't waste my time with your lectures. I'm not the one stuck in a loop. <laughs> Maybe you should look in the mirror. The next segment lays out another memory relived by Nara, but she's not alone in experiencing the old trauma of the events. Beth is here too, playing her role. I'll place the subtitles where Beth speaks. Notice during this how many ominous looking heads are staring at Nara, the focus of attention in a violent red void. Don't speak to me. is a series of failures. Some failures set you back a few steps. Some failures put you in the ground. The ones that are eternal are the ones that aren't forgotten. This isn't a game anymore, and you have no idea how good you have it here. If you leave, you'll regret it for the rest of your life. But it will be the best thing that has ever happened to you. Well, guess it's time to grow up. Elon then heads off alone and the sun rises in a painted background. We witness her journey in the game that follows, Pertinence. As Elon, we're meant to travel to the left, and only to the left, going through day after day of travel. Sometimes Elon is wary, bent over, and haggard. On other days, she's hopeful and seems more energetic. Scenery changes, and each room we traverse feels like a single day on her trip. But at the end, she reappears in the dark forest, and on her final day, we find her sick, crawling, headed back to Malone. Side note, if you choose to enter the wagon at the beginning of the game, it immediately closes the window, which makes sense as it would cancel out the whole cat ghost story. So, where does this bring us? Looking back at the Patreon video warmth, we're told there are six more episodes before cat ghost hits the finale. We've already seen three, so that means at least three more on the horizon. Right now, we can establish a great foundation for understanding the plot. 
at least in the sense of who these characters are and why they're together. There's still plenty we don't know after all of this. We're not certain if Elon was the girl in the cavern or if she was responsible for a girl ending up in the cavern. We don't know what Malone actually wanted with Elon and what price there is to pay for studying under her. We don't know how the skinwalker fits in or why. And finally, we have no clue what all of this has to do with the party country or computers, though it's definitely part of things. Is this really a purgatory for these characters, or were they just written that way in a video game series that was way too odd for its time? There is a hint of something twisted between technology and witchcraft happening here through this moment of speech by Malone in Void 2. There is a fine line between magic and science. Is there a way to channel ghosts through technology beyond just ESP? What are we really seeing when we watch Cat Ghost? How much of the ghost part is legitimate? I suppose, with only three episodes or so left, we don't have very long to find out. Cat Ghost is still every bit as one of a kind as it was when it first appeared. The determination to bring an interactive game element with every upload has never truly faltered, and each time it's been something different, ranging from more traditional ideas of small downloadable games to really playing with the concepts of ARG stories. Nobody does what Cat Ghost does, and it would be very, very hard to find someone who will ever match it. In a lot of ways, Cat Ghost has been the first of its kind, and it's made its mark. This is not just a fun cartoon series to watch with a dark and mysterious side. This is an achievement in storytelling, creativity, and conveyance. And it's no wonder the Patreon succeeded with flying colors and numbers continue to roll for new episodes. Cat Ghost is special. Special enough to have garnered all this attention and support and a dedicated fan base. From those who make constant theory videos to everyone in the fan discord, the viewers and players who submitted questions for judgment, and the editors for the Cat Ghost wiki, which made it possible for me to put this video together without having to drudge through every video in Cat Ghost game frame by frame again just to catch all the material. Thanks to all of you who put that together, and everyone who helped. This is a really exciting time. In the web series field, we don't get a lot of strong projects that actually have an ending, let alone one that's going to come in a timely scheduled fashion. A lot have giant unannounced hiatuses or drag on too long without substantial updates, spinning their wheels with no measure of storytelling that lets the audience know the end is in sight. Kakos has gone the route of Daisy Brown. It knows where the story ends, it's going there, and it's not going to mess around on the way. Knowing when to ramp up and finish the movie is a skill not enough creators in the scene have, but Cat Ghost has joined the ranks of the few who know when to leave on a high, and I have no doubt when this is over, we're going to be more than entertained. We'll be satisfied, and maybe, with all good endings, we'll want just a bit more and look back on the journey with the same hint of anticipation new uploads and game releases brought us. And at the end, we're still not going to be over, are we? The universe never truly ends, it just goes through changes. That's all for tonight, everybody. There are only a few Cat Ghost episodes and games left before the story wraps, it seems. So if you haven't subscribed, definitely do so now to catch it all when the uploads come. And yes, when it's all done, we'll be having a post-finale wrap-up special on the series, and I promise it'll be very soon after. I, too, am excited to see how this series concludes. Cat Ghost has never stopped impressing and entertaining me, and I'll be joining everyone in the big finale atmosphere for sure. If you've enjoyed this video, do subscribe to Nightmind for more content on web series, ARGs, internet storytelling, and other cool creative projects. Hit that notification bell too so you don't miss any uploads since YouTube does occasionally like to throw things through a wormhole. And hit the like button if you wish you had your own Gideon clone to enjoy dinner with. Thanks to all of you for viewing, and major thanks to all my supporters on Patreon, whose paper notes keep me warm in the cold of winter and beyond. Stick around to see their names at the end of this video. And remember, joining Patreon for any creator to support them is really as easy as buying a single cup of soda in the course of one month at a drive through but it's ten times as beneficial. One dollar, two dollars, anything at all. It goes a much longer distance than you may realize, and every donation is appreciated. Thanks for joining me in the dark again this evening. I'm Nick Nocturne, and just like our freaky face friend the Skinwalker, I'll be showing up again real soon. Sleep tight.
Bye.